So why the heck do you even have insurance anyway? Learn how you as the adjuster should be thinking about insurance policies starting now. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HagueEducation.com. All right, let's get into this. So what is a policy, right? What is insurance? And we're not, like I said, we're not going to go into the, you know, the insurance was started in 1600 in London by some guys sitting around under a tree and they decided, you know, it's shipping and blah, blah, blah. We're not doing that. This is, you're standing there talking to the homeowner. Why do I even have insurance anyway, right? Insurance policy is basically um, transfer of risk, right? In exchange for money. So we're going to transfer risk, I'm gonna misspell that of course, to the insurance company, right? In exchange for money depending on where you live and how big your house is or whatever, it could be, you know, a decent amount of money. This is the insurance policies, and this is not something that you really need to, to know, but basically it's what's known as an aleatory contract. And all that really means is, is that the, the policy doesn't really kick into effect uh, and, unless, that there, unless there's a, a claim. And a claim, all the claim is, is basically the policyholder, right? So I'm gonna be Mr. Policyholder, I'm gonna call the insurance company and claim, hey, I have some damage at my house. I think that you should pay for it, right? That's my claim. I'm claiming it to you, right? So it's kind of a verb. Um, well, obviously we use it as a noun, you get handed a stack of claims, right? The insurance company um, will then uh, assign an adjuster. Let's we'll just kind of walk through the process. Signs an adjuster who will go to the house or to my property, whether it's a business or whatever it is, and they will, um, investigate my claim that I think that I have damage. And as the policyholder, you know, I should know the policy. I should read the fine print, right, of anything that I sign, which the policy is a contract, right, between the insurance company and the policyholder. Most people don't, right? Um, but the insurance adjuster absolutely needs to know the policy kind of forwards and backwards, right? So the insurance adjuster is gonna go to the house or the property, the structure of the building, and look at the damage, what caused, you know, what do you think caused this? Well, it was came from the storm, right? Uh, tree limb came and stabbed through the roof and right into the living room and right through my couch and took out my Nintendo and my 89 inch TV and all this kind of stuff, right? That's my claim it happened during the storm, right? As the adjuster, then I need to investigate, okay, well, let's look in the policy, right? What does the policy say about this particular policy, right, for this house, which we'll say is an HO3, um, is wind covered, right? And I'm gonna look through there and I'm gonna to try to find everything that mentions wind. Yep, it's covered, right? And then, but there's some exclusions for it, so on and so forth. And then I make a decision about whether I'm gonna pay for it or not, right? Um, what well, key thing to remember about po insurance policies is that, and this is, <laughs> this is one of those things that like, I'll have arguments, well, not arguments, but I'll have like a spirited debates with contractors, usually roofing contractors, who are trying to get me to put every possible thing on, on the, the estimate for whatever reason, right? Um, often it's because they wanna to try to tell the homeowner that you don't have to pay your deductible, which is technically illegal some way, um, but that's a whole other story. But they're trying to get you to add a bunch of stuff to the estimate, and I'm gonna say, if I can, I will, 100%, but if I can't, I can't, right? Well, I mean, what do you, how can you say, you know, you've got to do this if you do that. You've got to replace that thing if you do that over there. And technically, if in a situation, if I don't have to do that, it's not remodeling insurance, right? It's not that, you know, the, the homeowner hates their three-tab roof and they really want to put a uh, standing seam metal roof on it that costs five times what they are what they have existing on the house. It's not remodeling insurance. So it only gives them like, kind, and quality, right? So like for like, right? If it's whatever similar quality, if this isn't available anymore, we find something that's similar to it. That's what they get paid for, right? The policyholder can take that money, right? They get paid $10,000 for their roof and they really hate their roof. It's always, it's caused them a lot of problems. It's ugly. You know, one of their neighbors got a metal roof and they really want to do what the neighbor did. They can absolutely take that $10,000 and put it towards the $18,000 it's going to cost 
to do their roof and metal. They can do whatever they want to with the money. They can buy jet skis with it. They can pay down debt. They can do the work. They cannot do the work. They can stuff it under a mattress. They can do whatever they want, right? Uh, but they can't claim the damage if they don't pay, if they don't replace the, the damaged item, they can't claim it again later because the insurance can't be paid for it, right? Insurance policy doesn't pay for everything. It doesn't cover everything. The main things that um, it doesn't cover are going to be things that can be considered wear and tear, right? My roof is old, right? I'm going to file a claim and say, hey, my roof is old. I don't want it anymore. I need a new roof, right? That claim is going to get denied because the roof is, everybody knows the roof is going to age. It wasn't sudden, wasn't direct, you know, physical damage caused by some other exterior peril. It was just wear and tear. It just got old. It started to fall apart. They're starting to find shingles in the yard. There wasn't a windstorm. There wasn't a, anything happened to it. It's just falling apart. Insurance company is going to say no for obvious reasons, right? It's, so it's not, it doesn't cover everything just because it's old, right? Um, by the same token, um, if a person, there may be exclusions in the policy if a person lives in a earthquake zone, right? Where they live on the coast, right? Um, where there's, it's highly prone to hurricanes, the insurance company may say, hey, listen, you know, you're choosing to live in a place that is a very high risk, right? The more risk you've got, either the more it's going to cost or the less coverage you're going to get, right? Or there's going to be some limitations to the coverage or you're going to have a higher deductible, right? So the insurance company is going to try to find ways to mitigate the risk, right? As a property owner, I want to mitigate risk because if my house costs one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which I don't know these days are there any houses that cost that much or that little. Um, but say I have one hundred fifty thousand dollars house. If it burns to the ground, I don't just have one hundred fifty grand in my pocket that I can give to a contractor and say rebuild my house, right? So I'm going to pay a subscription to the insurance company to, in case heaven forbid the worst happens to replace my house, right? That's what really most people pay. Technically, that's what you really should be paying insurance for. If you're filing claims for a little tiny claim, for a little tiny things, a little small damage where you're going to get 600 bucks or whatever, you know, is that really worth it? Is that really, you know, kind of utilizing the, the full, you know, capacity of the policy? I don't know. Um, so doesn't cover everything, right? And there's 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 reasons for it. Um, obviously, with the wear and tear on the roof, um, there's other things like another two other examples I could think of really quickly, and that is if if there's tree debris, right? The tree a windstorm comes through and blows the top out of a tree, and it lands in the middle of the yard and doesn't touch anything. It just hits the grass. Um, then the insurance company is going to say no to that. Well, why? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Why even do I pay for insurance anyway? Well, sir. Um, let's imagine a different scenario. Let's say it's fall, right? And leaves fall out of your tree. Where do we draw the line on there being sticks in the yard or tree branches or half of a tree or a whole tree and just some tree debris, just regular yard cleanup, right? That's one of those things where, and this is, this is one of the, like the sort of the key takeaway with this part. I would say that the policies are pretty tightly um, put together so that there can't be a door kicked open. Because if you open a door a little bit, then some enterprising contractors can come in and kick the door all the way open, right? So then you'd have every single fall, contractors running around with, with door magnets on their trucks saying, um, yard cleanup insurance claim specialists, right? And then they're going around and they're charging whatever they want, right? This, the price will escalate. And then homeowners insurance is absolutely outrageous, right? So there's there's things that they'll pay for and things that they won't pay for. The other example is seepage, right? So water, as soon as rain hits the ground, the insurance company doesn't do anything at all with it, right? Except on one certain circumstance. A flood is not covered under regular homeowner's property insurance. It's only covered by the government up till recently, which is there is private flood policies available, but the regular homeowner's policy still doesn't cover flood. You have to buy separate flood coverage, right? And the reason they do that is because there's a lot of leaky basements. There's a lot of damp basements in the United States. Where's the line, right? If, if they open the door just a little bit and they say, well, you know, if it, during a rainstorm, if it leaks in, you know, well, it rained and our basement's wet and our contractor says it's going to be $65,000 to pull these walls out and they're going to have to like do a, you know, 
pump thing and they're going to have to pull the floor out and they're going to have to do all this stuff and it's a gazillion dollars, right? Again, insurance rates skyrocket. Insurance company doesn't want to have things that can be, that would are normally like just prob structural problems with the house or wear and tear or that are like normal, right? Leaves falling out of trees, occasional branch falling out of a tree and landing in the yard and not damaging anything. They're not going to want to even open the door a crack on that stuff um, because then, like, like I said, the door just gets kicked all the way open. Guys will come up with incredibly creative ways to get the insurance companies to pay lots and lots and lots of money. They have to raise their rates because whatever they pay out has to be recouped, right? Um, so that's kind of the long and short of like um, uh, policies in general, why they don't cover everything. Um, there is one final component to this, and that is, is that there are um, each party, like the insurance company has a duty and the property owner, the policyholder also has, has specific duties. They're enumerated under the insuring agreement, but also in other parts of the policy, which we'll talk about when we go through the policy structure. But one of, just briefly, one of the, the duties of the homeowners is that they have to maintain their property, right? So you have to, you have to keep the property up. You know, if the roof needs to be replaced, you replace the roof. Um, otherwise, you are kind of running afoul of the contract. You're not upholding your part of the contract if you're not maintaining your property, right? Which is what underwriting is for, right? So briefly, underwriting is the, the part of the insurance company that goes and makes sure that the policyholders are holding up their end of the bargain, right? So they don't have things that add risk is what, is what underwriting is, is for, right? So again, roofs ancient, it's falling apart. It's a very, very high likelihood that even with a moderate storm, a few shingles blow off the roof, the insurance company is going to pay for that roof and they don't want to do that, right? You can't just wait for your stuff to fall apart and then file a claim every time you want a new roof, right? That's that's not the way it's supposed to work. You know, um, safety issues where the, there's, a, there's a major liability component, which we're not really going to go into because as property adjusters, we don't deal with the. You can absolutely do liability claims for sure, but if you get a, sent to a storm where you get handed daily claims, you're almost most likely not going to do liability. But liability is a big component of it, right? If you have a backyard with no fence and a swimming pool, even if, and especially if it has no fence around it, there's no fence around a swimming pool, whether it's got water in it or not, that's a high risk, right? Um, animals, people, little kids, whatever, can wander into the backyard, fall in, drown, right? Or, or get severely injured landing in the bottom of an empty swimming pool. Insurance company doesn't like that. They're going to send you a letter saying, hey, listen, we're going to drop you until you, unless you put a fence around this. They look at, you know, they'll do a, an underwriting audit and they'll say, they drive by the house and they'll say, you know, um, looking at your roof, you'll get, homeowners will get a letter saying, hey, listen, um, we're either going to only pay actual cash value on your roof or we're not going to pay for your roof at all until you have it replaced and you show us documentation and a photo that you had your roof replaced, right? Um, so that's kind of the duties of underwriting is to sort of keep the policyholder honest. And you're going to go to a lot of houses as an adjuster, uh, whether you're field or you're doing de remote desk where and you're looking at photos and you're like, man, that person like that roof is, I mean, it's, you could like, in order to, to manipulate the shingle, you need like a little like, like kids sand shovel or whatever to like scoop it up and then, you know, cause it's just absolutely, it, it hit its useful lifespan 15 or 20 years prior to when you're standing on it. Right. Um, that's not good for you as a homeowner, you know, being a homeowner, you have to take responsibility of your property and maintain it. It's one of the, the, the sort of, you know, responsibilities of, of owning properties that you maintain it. Right. Um, insurance company doesn't want to pay for it increase their risks in a bunch of different ways if you don't. So you've got duties. So are you confused by the weird insurance acronyms like ACV and RCV? The next video will clear all that up for you.